Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to Getting Started with Digital Potentiometers. In this video we'll cover what a digital potentiometer is, some typical specs, as well as show an example with two digital potentiometers. What is a digital potentiometer? Well there you can see a manual potentiometer, but what if you wanted to be able to change the resistance or adjust the resistance on a project without using any hands? So no hands. Let's say you're, de you're designing an audio speaker that you want to be able to control from your smartphone and you want to be able to adjust the volume from your smartphone. Well, that's where a digital potentiometer or even a digital rheostat come in. A digital potentiometer basically can connect to a microcontroller like Arduino and be controlled by a communication protocol like SPI. And in fact, SPI is the main one I've seen used. Two companies that make digital potentiometers are analog devices and microchip, and they both use SPI. Here's an example schematic uh, layout of a digital potentiometer. A and B are the two N connections that connect across the whole resistance value. W is the wiper arm. It's the third connection and allows you to switch to different levels. Now, how many different levels will it have? Well, that depends on whether it's an 8-bit, a 7-bit, or some other value. Uh, note, though, that you don't move in an analog fashion since the wiper arm is going to jump from one step in the ladder to the next. Uh, you're going to move in discrete steps when you adjust your digital potentiometer. So let's take a look at some typical digital potentiometer specs. I'm going to use two example models for this, and I'll use these models later in my example. But both of them are for microchip. One is the MCP4131 digital potentiometer. Uh, this is a 7-bit one, so it has 128 steps. So if you remember the diagram we just looked at, it's going to have, if we think of it as a resistance ladder, it's going to have 128 different settings on that resistance ladder. And its full value is 10 kilo ohms. So we have 128 steps between 10 kilo ohms. Uh, it doesn't have any memory. What that means is, is when you shut this chip off, it's going to start at midpoint. So no matter what it was set at, if you take off power and put power back on, it's going to start at around 5 kilo ohms. The other one is a little better than the first one we saw. So the MCP4161. This one's going to have more steps because it's 8-bit and 2 to the 8 is 256. This one's 5 kilo ohms. It has non-volatile memory so we can use a special command in SPI to tell it to start when it powers up at a certain resistance value. So it doesn't just start at mid-range. We can tell it where to start. And these, these two models come from a whole family of, of digital potentiometers. And here's some of the common specs. Supply, a nice wide range of supply. So it doesn't matter if you have 3.3 volts or 5 volts, you can power it. It comes in different resistance values. So here I have a 5 and a 10, but you can also get them in 50 and 100 kilo ohms. Note that the um, power is limited uh, to only about 400 milliwatts. So keep that in mind. Also note that these aren't precision devices meaning they're not going to be exactly 10 and they're not going to be exactly 5 kilo ohms. For instance, one of my, the one I used was 9.9 .9 kilo ohms. So there is going to be some you know, tolerance in, in the resistance. And to find out what your steps are going to be, you take the max resistance value and divide it by the, step, the number of steps to get what each resistance or discrete step value there'll be when you change the resistance. Also note that these don't go quite down to zero. Uh, the wiper arm does have some resistance, so I think it's about 75 or 80 ohms. So you can't quite go down to zero ohms with these. Here's the layout, and it, like I said, there's potentiometers. They also have rheostats. You can see the communication pins, which I'll talk about more in the example. So I have an Arduino Uno, and I have our two chips, the 31 and the 61. And I'm going to use the 31 to change the brightness on an LED by adjusting the resistance. And then I'm going to use the 61 to adjust the volume on a speaker. So I have all my communication pins hooked up, and I'm using an Arduino Uno. But if you have another Arduino, just look it up what the SPI com communication pins are. So for the Arduino Uno, pin 13 is the clock. That goes to pin 2 on each of the chips. The master out slave in is pin 3 on the chips and D11 on the Arduino. Now note... For this, I only need one-way communication. I only need to tell the chips to change their settings. I'm not going to read back any data, so I just need one line for that, so I don't use D12. 
Then I'm going to need two digital pins, D1, D2 and D3, to select each chip. So I tell which chip I'm talking to by putting that chip's digital pin to low, and then I put the other chip to high. So whichever one I set to low is the one that should be listening when I communicate out some spy communication. For uh, the 61, notice that I'm using D6. D6 is going to be my pulse width modulated signal. So I'm going to send the pulse width modulated signal, which is about 500 hertz, through the resistor, and then I'm going to adjust uh, the wiper arm 6 to essentially control the volume. So the pulse width modulated signal creates a tone. I'm going to adjust the volume of that tone using pin 6. And then the setup for the 31 chip is pretty simple. I'm just feeding 5 volts into pin 7, then using pin 6 to adjust the resistance and hence the brightness of the LED. Okay, here we are at a video of the example that I'm about to show. Here are the pit chips, I should say, not the pins, the chips. There's the 61, it's hidden behind some wires, and there is the 31. Here's the LED and here's the speaker. Let's take a look. I'm going to basically up the volume on the speaker, then lower it, then up it, then lower it. Uh, so we'll go back and forth, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the LED brightness. So a pretty simple example. I just went back and forth using the Arduino loop with a delay in it. And speaking of that, let's take a look at the code for the example. So here's the Arduino code. The first thing I'm going to do here is call in my spy library, my spy communication library. Next, I declare two integer values. And what these are, these are you send two commands to the digital potentiometers. The first command is a status command telling the digital potentiometer what type of command you're sending it and then the next one you typically send a value for instance the setting you want it to be at now the first one n volatile is for non-volatile memory so this status i would send to the 61 to tell it i want to store a non-volatile reading or i should say value in your memory and when you power up again you start at this value this other integer represents a write command and you send this to it, it tells the chip the next command that's going to be sent is a setting that's going to dictate your value or what to set your resistance value at. Okay, these pins, I'm not going to go into detail. These are the value pins, uh, so I'll step them up and down, but for setting the digital potentiometer value, these are just state variables that track, you know, am I counting up or am I counting down? So in my setup code, I turn pin 6 to output. This is going to be my pulse width modulated pin to feed in a tone to the speaker. These two pins are my chip select pin, so it tells the digital potentiometers which one I'm talking to. I start my communication. I then turn on my pulse width modulation in the setup code. Once we get to the loop, I use these functions, which I'll show in more detail, but these write functions to change the setting on the digital potentiometer. Then these if-else statements, I'm not gonna go through them, but basically I'm using them to count up and down, up and down, to set the resistance value, or to change, I should say, the resistance setting or the variable that I'll feed into those functions at the top. So let's take a look at those functions. So I have two of them, and they're basically the same thing, just for different potentiometers. The first one is write to dig, dig pot one, and write to dig pot two. So I select potentiometer number one, which is the 4161, by sending a low to pin two, I send a high to pin three to deselect the other one. I then just do a short delay, and then I transfer what type of status we're doing. So this is a volatile write. So I'm just going to change its current setting, the current resistance setting, and then I send the value, which I get from this argument. I do the same thing for digital pot two, except you know my pins are reversed here for selecting. This other function I included so you have an example of how to change the value in volatile memory, or I should say non-volatile memory. So this only works on the 61, but I'm sending, remember, my different status uh, integer value, which tells the 61 that I'm going to send a value that should store non-volatile memory, and then when it powers up next, it should start at that value. 
Note that when you send this command, it will not change the current resistance setting of the digital potentiometer. It will just change the one in non-volatile memory that will start up next time it's powered up. Okay, that's the code for the example. All right, that's it for getting started with digital potentiometers. In this video, we looked at what a digital potentiometer is. We looked at some models out there and some of their typical specs. We looked at how to operate them using communication. We can communicate them with a microcontroller, and we can change the resistance by stepping through the different values. If you want to grab the code that we showed in this video, go to my blog. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to my Forstronics YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you for watching.